Hey guys, Camille here. I am back today with another science demonstration that will teach you all about the concept of diffusion. Okay, so picture this. You're coloring a picture with some markers. You start coloring and two different colors start to touch. And when they touch, they start to bleed together and the colors start to move through each other. Or what about this? You're in class. And if all of you have the option to sit around the room, are you all going to sit together at the same table? Or are you going to each distribute at all of the different tables in the room? So these are the kinds of things that we're thinking about when we're looking at diffusion. Diffusion is the mixing of substances based upon the movement of their particles. This can happen with all different types of matter, but it usually happens in liquids and gases. Usually diffusion has two things, a rate and a direction. The direction of the diffusion is typically from a high concentration to a lower concentration, and the rate of diffusion depends on how fast the particles are moving. So maybe think of it like baking a birthday cake in your kitchen. Your kitchen starts to smell really good. It smells like there is a cake baking in the oven, but you might not be able to smell it upstairs. The smell of the cake is concentrated in your kitchen, and as time progresses, that higher concentration moves its way around your home where there wasn't a cake smell before, that was the lower concentration, and eventually it diffuses throughout your home and your whole house. It smells like a wonderful, fresh baked cake. And so there's lots of different things that might affect the rate of diffusion, but today we are going to be looking at how the temperature of a liquid affects its rate of diffusion. So this is really simple. All you're going to need is two clear glasses, some water, and some food coloring. So I'm gonna take these two glasses and fill them up with different temperatures of water. I'm gonna fill them about halfway full and I'll be right back. So I filled up my two clear glasses about halfway with tap water. And this glass I filled up with the hottest tap water I could get. And this one I filled with the coldest tap water I can get. And now what I'm going to do is put a drop of food coloring in each of them. And I'm gonna do my best to do it pretty much at the same time so we can compare the rate of how fast this diffuses within the water. Ready? Okay, so let's watch these and see how the rate of diffusion compares. So just by observation, we can see that the diffusion in the hot water happened quicker than in the cold water. When we put that water in originally, they looked the same. Why are they different? Why didn't they act the same? What is different about hot water than cold water? Food coloring mixes more quickly in the hot water because the hot water has more energy. And in terms of molecules, that means that the molecules of water in the hot water are actually moving around much quicker than in the cold water. And so if the molecules are moving more quickly, that means that dye is going to get mixed around that liquid a lot faster when molecules are moving faster. So that's why we see a higher rate of diffusion in our hot water than in our cold water. And why is diffusion even happening at all? When I put in that drop of dye, it's very concentrated. That is the area of highest concentration. So that dye wants to move to areas of lower concentration. So that would be the rest of the water that doesn't have any dye in it. So when we're actually seeing that dye distribute throughout the glass of water, we are seeing with our own eyes the movement from high concentration to low concentration. So if we were to compare the energy between my two glasses of water, my hot water has much more energy than my cold water. And this is really important because this high energy diffusion model is how all of our cells in our body get oxygen through our blood. So when the deoxygenated blood travels into the capillaries of our lungs where oxygen exchange takes place, the oxygen diffuses to the area of a lower concentration, which is the deoxygenated blood. And that's what helps our blood to regain oxygen to bring it around our body. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about diffusion, here are some wonderful questions that you can explore. In this experiment, we used the same temperature of food coloring in both of our glasses of water. Can you find a safe way to heat and cool your food coloring? And can you predict 
how it might change the rate of diffusion in each of your glasses of water. And where are some other places in your life that you see diffusion happen? Have you ever made coffee or tea? Do you think this plays into why coffee and tea are made with hot water? So find an example of where hot or cold water are used in diffusion. So try the opposite and observe any changes in your results. When you're done exploring diffusion, make sure to clean up. You can take both of your glasses of water, pour them down the sink, and make sure to wipe up any spills and put away your food coloring and materials when you're done. Thank you for watching, and I hope that I was able to diffuse a little bit of new knowledge into your minds. And remember that science really is all around us.